In this lesson, we will tell you about anonymous or public access to Confluence. An anonymous user is someone who cannot log into Confluence with a regular account, but can see public content. Of course, the administrators are the ones who define which content is accessible by anonymous users. So, every Confluence administrator should be aware of anonymous access to avoid accidental leaks of corporate data. Let's talk about situations when you need to grant public access to your Confluence site. The anonymous access is useful when the number of content editors is significantly smaller than the number of readers. In such cases, you will be able to save on the Confluence license. And it is also very convenient to grant public access when you don't know all your possible information consumers in advance. For example, you want to give access to some documentation for your partner company. You don't know the exact number of the information consumers and would like to avoid creating new users once new visitors attempt to access your knowledge base or documentation site. You have a big company and you need to share some common documents, instructions, policies with all your employees. You can use your internal Confluence site as a so-called knowledge base and you need to grant anonymous access to it for all the teammates who have no personal Confluence accounts. Such solution is very easy and cheap. You don't need to upgrade your Confluence license to provide every employee with read-only access to specific Confluence spaces. Although this scenario is acceptable when access to Confluence is available only from the internal corporate network, you should think twice before opening your corporate Confluence to external anonymous users. It is not the safest option because your corporate Confluence instance becomes available to a lot of people and, in some cases, for everybody on the Internet. If somebody hacks your Confluence, they will receive access to the corporate information. A space administrator can accidentally permit access to the space he is responsible for so your company's confidential information can be easily compromised. If you run your system in your company's network, it can be more difficult to grant anonymous access to your Confluence site for external users, your partners, for example. A great number of companies have found Confluence to be an extremely effective tool for knowledge sharing with clients. For example, a lot of Atlassian marketplace vendors are using Confluence as a product documentation portal to share essential information about their apps with current and potential customers. In such cases, we don't even know the people who want to view the content and, of course, can't create Confluence accounts for all of them. We recommend you to have a separate Confluence instance for such anonymous users and keep your internal confidential information in the corporate Confluence instance. If somebody hacks your site with public access, they won't be able to get the confidential information of your company, because you don't store it there. It is better to host your Confluence instance with public access, not in your local network, but on the Internet, to reduce page response time for your customers. As usual, Hosting providers allow you to choose the geographic location of your instance. You can also use Confluence Cloud, but it's a good solution only for some simple cases. Confluence Cloud offers fewer customizations and its apps have limited functionality. But pay attention that this option is more expensive because the same users require a separate license seat in both internal and external Confluence instances. This means that you will have to pay extra money. For example, you have 400 employees in your company and 60 of them edit documents in your Confluence instance with public access. In this case, you have to buy two Confluence licenses, 500 users license for your internal site and additional 100 users license for the external Confluence. Such option may impose additional difficulties on your users they need to log in to two different systems. It's also complicated to move drafts from your corporate site to the Confluence with anonymous access. There are several solutions and we are going to cover them later. If you choose a server instance, 
you can connect it to your existing crowd that is used by your internal Confluence site. The first option is to create a separate group that will contain users who can work with two Confluence instances. This group should have certain permissions to create and edit pages both in internal and external sites. But only this group will have the permission to log into external instance and you can specify it in crowd. The second option is to create one more directory. The original directory contains the users who can log into the internal Confluence. The new directory will contain users who can use both Confluence instances. The internal Confluence will use these two directories and the external site for public access will use only the second one. The important thing is not to create the same users in different directories. It will complicate the administration process and may require a more expensive crowd license. Now let's learn how to deal with anonymous access in practice. So, we navigate to Global Permissions, Anonymous Access and give public access to our Confluence site. Now we can enable anonymous access for some certain spaces. As soon as you grant the view permission to anonymous users, all pages without the view restrictions become available to them. So it is always better to set page restrictions first. As usual, anonymous users can only view the content, but you can also enable comments for them. But pay attention that all their comments will look alike, and it will be difficult to distinguish different anonymous users if you want to chat with them. Well, Actually, you can grant other permissions to the anonymous users, for example, to delete content. But in real life, it is difficult to come up with a case when you may need it. Note that you can't grant space admin or restrict permissions to anonymous users. Despite the fact that you have such settings, they will not be saved. You can open an incognito or private browser window to quickly check the settings of anonymous access. There is also another important peculiarity about anonymous access in Confluence. Let's assume we have three categories of users. Locked in users with appropriate permissions to access a certain space, other locked in users, anonymous users, or not locked in users. If we enable anonymous access in global permissions and give public access to a certain space, it is obvious that all of them will access the space. If we disable anonymous access in global permissions, but leave public access to the space enabled, we will get a so-called trick. Anonymous users will not access the space, but locked-in users without proper permissions will. The third option is very simple. If we disable anonymous access both in global and space permissions, only locked-in users with appropriate permissions will be able to access this space. If you want to enable comments or even page editing for anonymous users, we recommend you to enable capture to avoid attacks of spam bots. We can use the GNG shortcut and type spam prevention. As you can see, capture is disabled by default. We enable it 
and can see that only anonymous users will see it. By default, signed in users won't be shown capture. So let's save the changes and check how capture works. Let's open a new private browser window and try to comment in the required space. When we start typing the comment, the system shows a capture to us. We need to pass it if we want to save our comment in the system. We can also verify one more security option. We are talking about anonymous access to remote API. By default, is disabled and we recommend you to think twice before you decide to enable it. It allows anonymous users to access your confluence remotely. So it is easier for hackers to write bots that will be able to do anything to your confluence site. While talking about a separate confluence instance for anonymous users, we mentioned the inconvenience related to the work with drafts. It can be difficult to create drafts in your corporate confluence, but publish them in the confluence instance with public access. We can offer you several solutions to this problem. The first option is to create your drafts in a separate space of your confluence with public access. You need to restrict anonymous access to this space, otherwise all the changes made to the content will be visible to everybody. When you are ready to publish this page, you can copy or move it from this space to the public one, but this option requires some extra time. If you decide to update pages manually with the Ctrl A, Ctrl C and Ctrl V shortcuts or CMD Plus for MacBooks and you have page layouts and sections, you will be able to copy and paste only one separate section at a time so you will spend even more time. The second option is to use built-in Confluence drafts. Here you can make changes to the page and keep a draft of these changes instead of saving them at once. But definitely it's not a good practice. Confluence will keep aggregating these draft changes from different editors, which will result in further problems with the emerging when publishing a final version. Of course, you can use this method if you need to introduce some minor changes to the page, but generally we don't recommend this option. The third option is to use special apps that will help you to create drafts of your pages in the confluence with public access. So we are going to tell you about the app that is proven to be a worthy product on the Atlassian marketplace. It is the Kamala Workflows app for Confluence Server from Kamala Tech. So we are going to show you an example of how you can use the Kamala Workflows app if you have a separate Confluence instance for public documentation. With the help of this app, you will be able to update public content and prevent anonymous users from viewing your drafts or internal discussions. The Kamala Workflows app allows us to select a specific workflow that can be applied to the one chosen page or all pages in the space. You can also design your own custom workflows, but we are not going to cover this material in our course. These workflows show the stages of page lifecycle, editing, review, approval and published content. It helps to ensure that the content shared with anonymous users is fully approved and up to date. For our case, let's choose the simple approval workflow that has the two states in progress, draft, not visible to non-team members, and approved, published version available to everyone. By default, the configuration of the Kamala Workflows app makes drafts visible only to space administrators and page editors. Let's open a new private browser window and check it. We can see the message about insufficient permissions to view the draft version. But the situation will change 
as soon as we click Approve on the draft page. We can refresh the page in the private window and view the approved content. If someone from your team edits the content, the Space Administrators and the Editors will see a new version of the page. The anonymous users will still see the previous approved version. If we approve new edits, everybody will see them. You can also add any type of the workflow to the whole space by going to the Space Tools, Kamala Workflows, Workflows tab. Now we can create a new page and the selected workflow is added to this page automatically. We can check the states of our pages with the help of Workflow Report Macro. The Kamala Workflows app can be a great solution for collaboration between different departments of your company. When one department works on the content of a document, other departments see only the approved versions of the document. You can also assign page reviewers if needed. It saves time and helps you to avoid mistakes. At the end of our lesson, let's sum up the new information. The anonymous access to a Confluence instance is useful when the number of content editors is significantly smaller than the number of viewers or when you want to share your information with a lot of users all over the world. There are two implementation cases of Confluence with public access, a part of your internal Confluence site or separate external Confluence instance. Each option has its pros and cons. You need to verify a couple of security settings before enabling anonymous access. The Kamala Workflows app is a good solution for managing page drafts in your Confluence with public access.